What's up guys, and today we're going to be taking a look at the newly released indie game Dragonfin Soup. Now this game was made by the indie company Grimm Brothers, which is a group of about five people, which had a really big Kickstarter backing. I think it was over 100,000 by the time they actually closed it. And this game was released on most of your Sony consoles. I know the PS3, PS4, and the PlayStation Vita were all part of the general release as well as Steam, where it starts off at 19.99. At first glance, this game kind of reminds me of the game Enchanted Cave on Congregate with a touch of the humor from the Disgaea series. Now to start off this review, I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the stuff that I did like about the game and later into it, we'll go ahead and touch on some of the stuff that I had issues with or was just game-breaking glitches the game had. In this game, you play as Red Robin. She appears to be the grown-up version of Little Red Riding Hood who somehow made the Big Bad Wolf an indentured servant or something. Anyways, when you start the game, it really does kind of throw you into the battle mechanics of it real early on, which is a dream sequence that kind of, I guess, sets the pace for the game and maybe shows a little backstory. And once you come to, you're basically set to your own devices with no tutorial whatsoever. So I highly encourage reading the manual at the main menu. But it's called Read or Die, and they mean that. You really gotta read that to get going. I know my first playthrough, I actually ended up restarting just to figure out what the status effects were and how the actual game mechanics did work. And once you dive a little deeper into it, you start to figure out that Robin is somewhat of a alcoholic, which is kind of surprising given she looks like a 14-year-old girl. I don't know who this bartender is, but he's going to have some trouble explaining this to the authorities. Not only is this bartender serving minors, but he's also the one sending you on these life-threatening quests that'll progress the story. Which really does bring me to my first pro about the game. The battle system isn't bad, but it does take some getting used to. It really does put you in the mindset of the Enchanted Cave, which is a game if you haven't tried, definitely worth checking out. I know you can see it on Congregate, and I'm sure it's on other websites as well. Basically, when you move, the enemies move. And the faster you move, the faster the enemies move, which kind of gives you the ability to speed up or slow down the pace of the actual battle. Given most of the time you'll be hiding behind Big Bad Wolf, so and he'll be absorbing all your damage. Now these battles can be really difficult starting out, but depending on the seed that you enter, I know that all the drops are random, therefore you can actually get really good equipment early on that's going to make the battles significantly easier. I was lucky enough to get some decent equipment where I could actually knock out a decent chunk of the game for this review, but I wouldn't count on that. It really does seem like a lot of the budget for this game went to both art and the music style to fit the mood of the game. Especially from a small indie group, this would be the certain areas you would expect them to fall short on, but they definitely follow through on this. Another aspect of the game I really enjoyed were the items. Both the item descriptions and the items that you're actually used to heal, which is liquor, are actually uh, pretty funny and uh, just re really good to actually read the descriptions for. Though they can't all be winners, uh, some of these are at least going to make you chuckle. Alright, now that we've discussed some of the good things about the game, let's go ahead and get into the cons I have for it. First off, this game is far from complete. As this game has game-breaking problems that should be addressed later on in updates, but as of right now, this is not a complete game. Most notably would be the rapid frame rate drop in which you really can't even tell where your character's at because they can be a couple moves ahead from where they're actually appearing on the screen. What makes this worse is when you're in battle you can actually be in a position to actually be hit by the enemy, yet you don't see it on your end, so you'll keep moving. Problems like this, in my opinion, can really take away from the overall experience and feel of the game. And to touch on the audio aspect of it, there is also issues with both the sound effects and the music in which it will cycle over and over. And so you grip past all these problems, you get your good gear, and then you decide to save the game. Now in my experience, there were issues where it just completely froze when you were attempting to save the game, which kinda does make the game roguelike, I guess. As you could lose everything you worked for just by trying to save everything you worked for. And the story of this game really doesn't drive you to seek it out, as some of the actual quest givers for the main storyline can be hidden, and if you don't talk to them, you'll simply never progress the main storyline. Now, I wouldn't say to completely disregard this game, as when it first came out, it is free on PlayStation Plus on almost every console. All in all, this game does have a lot of issues, but when it works, it's actually pretty fun. It really does force you to take a tactical look at the enemies later on and deal with them in the most thorough manner. So if you do have some interest in this game, at least check it out because it's uh, no money out of your wallet. 
I do believe a lot of the issues with the game have to do with being released on multiple platforms at the same time, especially from a small indie developer. Because these guys aren't going to have the assets or manpower to fix all the issues as they arise. Not like Bethesda with Fallout or Skyrim, for example. If there was one thing I could say to the developers, it would be to keep trying. There are some really good things about this game. It just needs a lot of polish to actually shine. So in conclusion, if this game does look like it's something that would interest you, at least give it a shot, try it out, see what you think about it. Just don't expect any game of the year material inside of this. And as always guys, thanks for watching. If there's anything you would like to add, go ahead and throw a comment in there. Maybe even drop a like. And if you'd like to see more reviews of small indie games like this, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel.